Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video we will put a little calculator with Jetpack Compose. So this is clearly targeted to those who just learned the basics of Jetpack Compose, who know what a row is, what a column is, what a box is, but who now want to take all these single concepts and put them together to a very simple app without any fancy like dependency injection architecture, which might overwhelm a lot of beginners. So let's just take the concepts you've learned, for example, in my Jetpack Compose basics playlist and apply this here into a very simple and an okay looking app actually, which is simply a calculator. So the way this will work uh, will probably not surprise you. We can enter some numbers here. We can uh, have done uh, some kind of operation, let's say a minus, and we say, okay, minus 82, we press equals, and then the result is minus five. And we can also go on from here. We can multiply this with nine, for example, and we get <laughs> the result as well. We can delete some characters here to enter something else. We can also do something and completely clear this screen. And that is pretty much it. And yeah, of course, we can also use decimal numbers. So 5.5, .5, for example, times eight, and then we get the result. So this will be a very simple version of a calculator. What doesn't work here, for example, is we can't chain multiple of these operations. That is actually a very brilliant homework for you after this. So we can say eight times eight minus six, then it actually just replaces the current operation here. So yeah, that is what we'll build. I'll just jump into an empty Compose project here, which you can also just create. You don't need any fancy dependencies, actually just one for a view model. We, um, we will use a view model to just do all the calculation stuff, but I will explain that once we get to that point. And for that, you just need to go to your build.gradle file and simply paste the view model dependency for Jetpack Compose under the dependencies block like this. So you can yeah, either just, yeah, I think writing it off is just the quickest here. Um, I will also push the code to GitHub so you can also copy and paste it there, but it's really the only thing you need to paste into your project. We can click synchronize now, and then we will jump here into main activity to actually build the UI first, I would say, so that you can actually get a better impression of what Jetpack Compose is, how it works, how all these rows, columns, and stuff like that work together, how you can build responsive UIs with that. So cool stuff. First of all, in an empty Compose project, we will see these two sample composables, which we can delete. And we can also delete the surface here, which is initially created, since we will build our very own UI here. So the first thing when it comes to building UIs with Jetpack Compose is that I take a look at the layout in the UI that I want to build, which is in this case, this one. And I try to find specific components kind of of the UI that repeat itself. And if we take a look at this calculator layout, then I think it's pretty obvious that all these buttons here look fairly similar. Some are, some are wider than the others, some have a different color, but overall they are all very similar. And if you have that in a project, then you should make that a single component, a single composable, as we say in Jetpack Compose. And that is what we will build. We will build a calculator button. So in our root package, we will create another class or rather just plain Kotlin file called calculator button. Select file here and we can write comp to create a composable function here, which will also just call uh, calculator button. And there we go. And now the first thing when I build a composable is I try to think of parameters that we want to pass from the outside. So in which ways can two different buttons differ. So if we take a look at our layout again, that could, for example, be the width, it could be the color, um, and maybe it could be the font. So if you want to swap out the font or change the font size or so, but that's pretty much it. That is what we want to change you for these buttons. So what do we need for that? On the one hand, we of course need a symbol, which is what the button should represent. So whether it's a number or it's the, the plus operation or the minus one, just what the, the single symbol of the button should be. Then we want to pass a modifier, which in Jetpack Compose is used to just do all kinds of um, common UI changes, just changes that you would like to do to any kind of composable, like changing the background color, changing the, the shape or so, which you of course also want to do for this button. So some buttons should be wider than others, some buttons um, should actually have a different color. So that is why we'll, how we will use this modifier. And something we also want to provide here is an on-click lambda. Because of course we want to be able to respond to click events 
outside of this calculator button composable, when we click on that number, then we want to send an event to our view model that we actually just entered the specific number so the view model can update our state. But that's pretty much it. I'll leave out the option to design the text here and I'll just hard code it into this composable. If you want to be more flexible, you could also pass a text style here, but I'll leave this for this rather simple example here. So how will we now create such a round button? Well, in the end, that's super simple. We will just use a box for that, a box, and inside of that box, we will put a text, which is just centered in that box. And then we can apply a modifier to that box to make it round and all that stuff. So let's start with that. Having a box composable, usually a box um, is used to actually just arrange um, the, the child composables, like the text, for example, inside of that box, either in the top left corner, the top right one, in the center. So that is one when we use a box. And in this case here, we want to just have one composable, a child composable, which is the text, which we want to arrange in the center of this box. So first of all, I want to say, okay, the content alignment is actually center. So all the content in that box should be centered in it. We also want to pass a modifier, where we pass the modifier we actually pass as a parameter. And this one here, then let's actually do it differently. Let's say we first create a normal modifier here, and I'll explain why. Um, and then we want to say we clip this. So that is how we get the rounded corners, by simply clipping this to a circle shape. And then we make it clickable since when we click on it, we want to trigger our on click lambda. And then we say dot then and pass our modifier. The reason I want to do it this way around is, let's say we would instead pass the modifier we pass as a parameter here, then let's say we would want a different shape. And then we want to say dot then and pass our modifier. So if we do it that way, then our modifier that we pass just gets applied after all of these. And if we do it this way around that we have the modifier here, then we will first take the modifier that's passed from the outside and then apply these things here. So if you would then have a normal modifier and you would apply some kind of shape and do it this way around and you say clip, then the clipping would kind of apply to the clipping you passed. If we do it the other way around, then we will apply our modifier at the very end. And then we can open the block of code here. And instead of that, we will simply have one single text composable, composable which will represent our symbol. So a text, which will be the symbol. What else do we want to change? I'd like to pass a font size of 36 SP. As I said, I will hard code this here. If you want more flexibility, pass this from the outside as a text style and pass it here for the style attribute. And I want to pass a color of color white. And if you work with like a light and dark theme here, then you want to use material themes that colors instead. So material theme, there's one here that colors and refer to your maybe on background color or so. But since we only have a cool dark theme here, I will say color that white. Now what's next? Next is actually, um, we need to think about how we can, how we could do this in a smart way uh, that we send kind of events to the view model when we pressed one of these buttons and we minimize the amount of events we need. So we don't want to have an event for each number. We don't want to have a like typed seven event, typed eight event, typed five event. Um, so we kind of want to have the minimum amount of events that we need to tell our view model what it should do, if that makes sense. So what we'll do is we will have one class of events for all the numbers, which will just send a number to the view model. We will have an event to clear the whole, um, the whole calculation state, you can say. We will have an event to delete the last character and we will have an event to perform an operation. So that is one of these here, one of uh, the typical calculation operations. And we will have one event for actually doing the calculation when we press equals and actually for the decimal number. So when we click on the decimal place, then we will also send an event. So those are basically the events we need here. And I want to put this in a sealed class in Kotlin, which I like to do called calculator actions actually here, since all of these are kind of actions, select sealed class. And then for each thing the user will do on the screen, we will send such a calculator action to the view model. So the view model easily knows what it should do with that specific 
user event. So for example, to actually send a number to the view model, we could have a data class number where we can pass a number of type integer, of course. And that is a calculator action. Let's actually just call this action in singular. You can uh, change the name pressing shift and F6. So what else do we have? If we have an object here that doesn't recur any parameters, which would be called clear to clear the whole calculation. We would have an object to delete the last character. We would have an object decimal to enter a decimal place. We would have an object calculate to actually perform the calculation. And then we would have a data class operation. So when we either enter a plus, a minus, um, and so on. And here we actually want to pass that, for which I like to create another class, another shared class, inside of our root package called calculator operation. Select shared class. And here that will be on the one hand to add two numbers calculator uh, operation and we actually want to be able to pass a symbol that applies to this specific action so we can easily just show that on the button later on so here the symbol would be a plus to add two numbers we can actually duplicate this we will have a subtract operation which will be a minus of course we will have a multiply operation, which I will use the X for, I can use the asterisk, I'll use that one, and we will have a divide operation, which I will use a backslash. So it's actually a forward slash. Um, let's go back to calculator action. Now we can make use of this operation class to pass it here operation of type calculator operation. And that's of course a calculator action. So those are now the different things a user could do on our calculator screen. And for each click event, we will now attach such a calculator action and send it to the view model. So in the view model, we can then easily distinguish, okay, did the user actually type a number? Did they type um, an operation? Did they click on calculate? Did they click on uh, like delete the last character or so? Uh, I think you get what I mean here. And then the last bit we need here before we can jump into building the actual UI is we need a state. So as you probably know in Compose, state is any type of value that can change over time. And in our case, well, if we take a look at the app here, then what is a value here on the screen that could change over time? If we see, okay, we click something here, well, then it's of course the number here. And the way this will work under the hood is that we will have a number one, we will have a number two, and we will have an operation, which all belong to the state. So this would be the number one. And as soon as we type an operation, we will append this, the state will now be, um, so number one will be 854, the operation will be a plus, and number two will still be empty because we haven't entered a number two yet. But anything we enter from now on will be number two. And whenever we then click on calculate, the result will automatically become number one. So we could start over again and we could enter a number two and so on. I think that makes sense. So here in our root package, we will have a calculator state, a data class, which will simply summarize the number one, which is, I'll actually make this a string because it's much easier to deal with strings in this case. And we will then later convert it to actual numbers to do the calculation. And we'll have a number two, which is also an empty string by default. And we have an operation, calculator operation, which is null by default since we didn't type any yet. Then we will actually go to a root package. We will create a view model, which we don't um, fully right now, but just to have some kind of source of state, which I will call calculator view model. So if you're not familiar with view models in Jetpack Compose, the job of the view model is in the end just to accept user events, which are in this case, as we, as we mentioned here, um, for example, clicking on a number button, clicking on an operation button, and the, the view model will then accept that and kind of map it to a new state. So it, the, the view model is 
um, responsible for actually changing the state so the UI can be updated with that new state. And it will also keep the state since the view model is actually um, not destroyed on a screen rotation, which is normally the case in Android with activities. So the state would be lost if you put it in an activity, but it won't be lost if you put it in a view model. So far so good. Let's make that a class that inherits from view model. And then we'll just have a state here, our state by mutable state off. And we need to press import twice here, L plus enter. And we create an empty calculator state here as an initial state. We say that is a private set. That means we can change the state from the outside, but we can still access and read it, which is what we want. We don't want to be able to change the state from our UI. So now we can finally jump into main activity and start building the UI with what we have. We can get a reference to our state and our view model here by using val view model is equal to view model. This composable function here where we need to specify what kind of view model it is, which is a calculator view model. And we can get a reference to the state using view model state. And I will make it a variable, whatever our button spacing is. And I will set that to 8 dp. We can import dp here. So the uh, button spacing will actually be just the space between all of these buttons here. So we can just have a variable to easily change that and play around with it. So the first thing we will do here in our layout is we will have a big box. We could also put this in a separate calculator composable actually. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Mm, let's do that in a separate file. Calculator, which is a file. We create a composable, call it calculator. There we go. And that will take a calculator state from the outside. And let's also be able to pass a modifier here, which is equal to the default one. So if we take a look at our UI, how will this work? Well, in the end, this whole layout will be our calculator here, uh, but it only actually occupies a height till around here. So the calculator is actually only this part and this is pretty much free space. So that is why I will put it in a box so we can simply align this whole calculator to the bottom so it doesn't stick around on the top here which would look ugly that is why i'll just put it in a box as a root layout and instead of that box we will then have a column so in the column we will have this main text here which will just be a simple text composable that displays the um, current calculation and below that we will have a lot of rows in that column. So we will still have that one big column which also contains this um, calculation text. But in that we will have one row here for this section. We will have another row here. Basically five extra rows here for all these buttons. And that is how we can arrange this in such a grid. And I will show you how we can also um, do that in a responsive way so that you have the same space here, that you have some buttons with a wider width. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go back here and start with our box composable. We will apply our modifier and we can actually open the block of code here in which we will create our column. Here the modifier will be modifier fill max width. So we just fill the whole width of the screen and we say we want to align this in the center, actually bottom center. And that is only possible because this column is inside of a box. That is why we have access to this align modifier. And what we also want to do is we want to say vertical arrangement is, and you can see we have a bunch of options here to choose from, um, a space between, center, bottom, which you've probably learned about. That is just, yeah, basically ways how we can space um, items in a column. But something that I will use here is arrangement dot spaced by and we pass our button spacing that we actually need to pass here which is a dp unit and let's also default this to atp and then we pass our button spacing in here and what that will do is it will just make sure that there is a dp of space between all items in that column in a vertical direction then we will have a simple text in here which will represent the calculation and the result. So what will the text be? Well, we can actually construct the text out of our state. So we can say it starts with state.number1, which is a string again, so we can easily do this. We want to add the operation if there is one. 
So let's open parentheses here, say state.operation that comes next. And if that's null, we just don't want to append anything, just an empty string. And after that, we want to append state number two. So that is how we in the end get our whole line of numbers and operations. We want to make sure that it's aligned towards the end. So it's just right aligned. We apply a modifier to make it fill the whole width again. And we give it some vertical padding of 32 dp. This vertical padding will make sure that we have a bit of space here and a bit of space here. I like to give it a font style of, is it? No, it's actually font weight. Font weight of light. Oops. Font weight of light. A font size of ADSP, so quite big. Import SP. Give it a color of color dot white and a max lines of two so that it never occupies more than two lines. So next we actually only need to worry about our buttons, which are quite a lot. And that will be that will be quite a lot of code here. Um, usually if you have such repetitive patterns here, like you, a lot of buttons, you could put these in a list and just describe the properties of each button. So like the symbol, you could define the color and then you could just loop over this list and add all these composables. But in this case, I found that this is not a too good approach, at least for this layout or it, um, to, to make it a good approach, it would require a lot of more work because it's quite hard to describe in a list that some buttons are actually wider than others. So how much space some buttons occupy and that others occupy less space of the grid. And that is why I just put in all the code here since it's unlikely that it will get a lot more here. So we'll start with the first row which will have a modifier of modifier fill max width again. And this time we say horizontal arrangement is again arrangement spaced by our button spacing. So we just also have the same space horizontally. And in here, now that will be our first row, which will represent these three buttons, the AC button, the deletion button, and the division button. So we will have our calculator button in here the symbol for this one will be AC. And we actually also want to pass a color here for all these buttons. So they are not white or so. Um, let's do that with a modifier. Modifier dot background would be, in this case, they are a light gray. So let's just define some basic colors, which I will paste in the color file here in UI theme just below this here, three colors, medium gray, light gray, and orange. These are the three colors we use. Yeah, feel free to copy these from my GitHub or just type this off. I will use light gray here, not color that light gray, we just wanna use our own light gray. And something we wanna make sure for this button is that it actually is twice as wide as a normal button. And for that, what I like to use is, on the one hand, aspect ratio, aspect ratio of two, so that the width of the button is twice as wide as it is high. And we also want to apply a weight, which we can do in rows and columns. So with a weight, we can say, okay, that actually applies, um, that has a weight of two. And if we then give the other two buttons that we have in that row, a weight of one for each, then Compose will kind of figure out that this button here has a higher weight than these other two buttons, so it will occupy a larger um, proportion of the width of the row. And in here, when we click on this, I actually don't like this one, let's just put it as on click in here. We say something like on action, and the action that we want to pass here is calculator action dot clear. Since when we click on AC, we want to clear. And we, of course, need to make this a lambda we pass here. Let's also push the modifier up here. Say on action. And here we've passed that calculator action and we hoist it up to our main activity later on, which can then call the view model with that action. Cool. Now all we will do is a bunch of copy and pasting and changing some properties. So let's copy the calculator button, paste it two more times for this row. This one here will be the delete button. Background will also be light gray. The aspect ratio will stay one here in the weight. And we call the delete event. And this one will be the divide one. 
Um, it will actually be orange, this one, and also a weight of 1F and an aspect ratio of 1F. We call this time an operation and the operation will be divide. That is how we can do this. Then um, let's actually copy the whole row and paste it. We will now do this for the other rows as well. And again, as you see, that, that is quite a lot of repetitive code here, which you, which I would optimize for a larger project in which I know um, that the grid for the calculator must be very flexible. Um, but I think it is, it doesn't need to be very flexible here, um, which is why I do the simple approach, also just for the tutorial, of course. Um, but it would be quite, yeah, it's just not so easy to make it as flexible that you can just define which button actually ranges how wide so um, that we, that you manipulate the weights and here just with elements in the list if that makes sense so in the end what you would want to build is something similar to the css grid if you're a little bit familiar with that which is um, not too easy but never mind let's get back here into our second row which will start um, with number seven and that is just weight and aspect ratio of one so it's just a squared one or rather a circle one since we crop it uh, light gray is not correct here we want to use color dot dark gray here and the action will be number and which number do we type well the seven we can actually copy this here for the rest so one two three so we have four items in that row. This will be number eight. Number eight, here we have number nine and number nine. And this one will be the multiply operator. Mm, color orange for this one, actually just orange. And here we don't call number, we call operation multiply. Again, we copy this row, paste it here. For this one, we will actually start with four here as well, four, five, and six. And the operation in this case will be minus. This one will be orange, that's fine. Here we replace this with a subtract. And one more time actually two more times. This one starts with one. Dark gray is fine. Here we have one, here we have two. This one is three, oops. And the last one, the orange one again is plus this time. So we say operation dot, or actually add, I called it. And one last time. Here the first one is actually zero has zero here. For this one, since it occupies two columns again, we will make sure that it has a weight and aspect ratio of two. This one will be the decimal place, so just a dot. Um, instead of number, we want to send the action decimal. And this one, the last one, will be equals, which will also be orange. And we send the action Oops, calculate. And the last one isn't needed since we only have three buttons in the last row. But that's pretty much how we build the UI here. As I said, quite a lot of code, but since we could copy paste a lot, it's not so bad. Let's go to main activity and have our calculator here. The state will be our state and the action will be actually view model, double colon, on action, which is a function we don't have yet. And we want to pass our button spacing. Um, button spacing is button spacing and actually also a modifier. The modifier will just be a modifier filling the whole screen. It will have a background color of color dark gray. And I think I actually made a mistake here with the colors. I actually wanted the dark gray one as the background color. As you see, um, this one is, oh no, the, the background color is a medium gray. This one is darker. So I, I did it right, but this one actually needs to be medium gray, which I passed in the 
color file and I just want to apply some padding of 16 dp here. Cool, that is it for our UI. The remaining, remaining part of the video will be to have the business logic in the view model. So what we do and how we map the state so that our calculator actually works. So let's go into the view model and create our function on action. And this will take such an, evac <laughs> such an action, which is a calculator action. And here we can simply distinguish in a when expression if that action is a number from our calculator action. Then we want to say enter number, which is a function we'll create and actually also pass the number here from the action. If that is, let's say the action decimal, we say enter decimal, doesn't need a parameter. This one is clear. So in this case, we can directly say the state is just the initial state again. So we just clear our whole state. If it is calculator action dot operation, we say enter operation, action dot operation. If it is calculator action dot, I think that's it, right? Um, operation decimal number calculate, that's missing, of course. Then we say perform calculation. And it's actually not too much work here um, to do that. What is missing here? Other oh, delete branch is missing. Okay, let's also say is delete. So we say, um, just delete. Um, well, let's, let's say perform deletion. Cool. Now we can go to these functions, press alt enter, and press create function enter number. That's fine. We do it for the enter decimal just to create all these functions in a quick way. Enter operation, perform, oops, perform calculation, and perform deletion. Cool. Let's start with enter operation because that's quite a simple one. Well, now we actually need to take our state and decide depending on the existing state whether we want to be able to enter an operation or not. So if we take a look in our app, then now since we entered the first number, we actually want to be able to enter an operation like multiplication here, and then we can enter a second number. But let's say we have an initial state with no number entered, then we don't want anything to happen when we click here on an operation. So that is what we want to check. If state operation is actually not state operation if state number one is not blank so if we entered something for number one we want to apply the operation to our state so we say state is state at copy and then the operation is the new operation if you're new to what state at copy means that basically just creates a, a copy of our state changes the operation re, the, the rest remains the same and then it applies this whole new state with the changed operation to our existing one without actually needing to make our single fields of the state mutable, which would not trigger a recomposition here. Cool, let's next go to, let's say, perform deletion. What do we want to do here? We want to have a when expression, because depending on what we entered, we want to delete something else. First of all, we want to check if the state number two is not blank. So if we entered something for the second number, then the first thing we want to do is we want to remove a character from this uh, from the second number so then state is state at copy again and here we just want to change the second number so we say state at number two drop last one so we just drop the last character here of this number and, and assign a new result to the new number and the new state next we want to check so this would now be executed if the number two is blank so if we did not enter a number two then we want to check if we actually entered an operation because that would be the next thing we would want to delete. So if state operation is not null, state is state at copy and operation is null in that case since we delete that. And finally, I guess you guessed it, state number one is not blank. Then we say state is state at copy. Number one is state number one drop last one. 
And that is our delete function. Then let's next go to enter decimal. When do we want to be able to enter a decimal? Well, either if we are currently entering the number one or if we are currently entering the number two. And then we also want to make sure that um, the number two and number one actually already contain some numbers since we don't want to be able to enter the decimal as the first character of the number string. And we want to be able to make sure that the number one and number two both actually don't already contain a decimal place because we of course only can have one in that string. So if the operation of our state is null and our state number one does not contain the decimal place and state number one is not blank, then we want to apply the decimal place to the first number. Let me reformat that a little bit. So if we did not enter an operation yet, we know we're currently entering the first number. If the first number does not contain a decimal place already, then we know we could enter one theoretically. And we want to check if the first number is not blank. So we can enter the decimal place as the very first character. So if all this is not the case, or is the case rather, you want to say state is state copy and number one is state number one plus our decimal place. And we can return out of this if condition. Now, if we did not return here, so if this condition was false, we want to check if we could, if we can enter such a decimal place for the number two. And that will essentially be very similar. So we can copy this if condition. We don't need to check for the state operation being equal to null here because that is not null if we can enter the second number. We need to swap this out to number two, this, this one as well. And this one as well. And the return is not needed. So that is how we can enter a decimal here. Then we still have the function enter a number. So how do we check if we want to add this number that we entered? How If we want to add that to the first number of the second one? Well, we can again use the operation for that. State operation is equal to null because if that if we did not enter an operation yet, we know we want to um, attach this number to the number one. And I also want to kind of add a check here that the number can't get too long. So if the um, state number one dot length is longer than or equal than like a max num length, which we can create here, we simply return. So let's just have a companion object with a private const val max num length, which I'll set to eight. So if the number is not too long already, we want to simply add it. So state is stated copy. Number one is state number one plus our number we entered. Then we can return here. We can again add a check here. So if this is, if we go on here, we know we need to enter number two, or we need to add it to number two. Um, if state number two length is longer than the max num length, we again return and else we say state is state at copy number two is state number two um, plus number. And that's it for the enter number function. And one function is missing, which is our perform calculation. The most interesting one, of course. First of all, we want to cast our actual numbers now. So since we still save these as strings in our state, we want to have these as actual double values so we can also calculate with decimals. So val number one is state number one to double or null. It will be null if we can't cast this, which should not happen here, to be honest. Number two as well and number two. And we will have um, actually a result which we can calculate based on the operation. So when state dot operation is at, we want to say the result is number one plus number two. We want to say if it is subtract number one minus number two. If it is multiply number one times number two or if it is divide, then we have number one divided by number two. 
And of course we get a bunch of issues here because these are null values or nullable values. So we first of all need to check if number one isn't null and number two also isn't null. Then we can kind of perform the calculation here and it could theoretically also be null like the operation that we simply want to return here, which shouldn't happen at this case. Or like it, it can happen. Actually, I don't think so that it can happen because we would already have returned here if one of these numbers would be null. And if both numbers aren't null, then we can calculate something. So after that, after we've calculated that, we can say the state is state at copy. And now the number one will become the result. So number one is result dot to string, since we saved that as a string, then we can say take 15, which I just like to do to not make these numbers too long. So we'll just take the first 15 characters here of the result. We also want to make sure that number two gets reset to nothing so we can enter it again and that the operation gets reset back to null. And that's it for our calculator. I think so, at least. So in our main activity, we already have the view model. So that should already work. Let's just launch this here on my device and see if everything build was successful. That looks good. Let's wait until it launches. And there we go. Looks pretty similar. Let's try to enter something with eight, five. Um, okay. <laughs> what happened now? Um, looks like somewhere I did something wrong. Okay. I, I, I clicked on <laughs> multiply and it prints my package name. I guess it prints some kind of action as a string. So calculator operation, let's check our operation function here. Oh, I see what is happening. It is actually in our calculator here. That's the issue because I print the operation and not the symbol of the operation. That is what I want to do. The symbol would be the actual string representation. So let's relaunch this here and then that should be fixed. Uh, five times five. Yeah, that now looks good. Equal 25. Decimal places also work. Cool. We can delete characters. It's a little bit weird that it goes from the left to the right here because of our right align, but it's fine, I guess. We can clear this thing. We can use decimal places. Looks pretty good. Looks like a working version of a calculator. So I think such a simple tutorial is j just a lot better to get started with a technology like Jetpack Compose without just needing to deal with all that complex stuff like MVVM, dependency injection, retrofit, dagger, and all that stuff. Uh, beginners are quickly overwhelmed with. I think this is a very good way to just build something very simple. If you like this and if you want me to do more of these simple apps, like we could, I could also think of something like a tic-tac-toe game or so, then let me know that down below and I will see what I can do. If you want to take this to the next level, however, then you can watch my stock market app tutorial following clean architecture and all these fancy guidelines. So if you want to see, see and learn that, then simply click here.